and shout hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand together and receive the daughter of Reverend Clay Evans, my sister and partner in all things good, Claudette Evans Pie. Come on, somebody clap your hands and celebrate. I have no voice. I decided yesterday I would be with daddy when he entered into the church and I would stay with him all day. And I had not been feeling well prior to, but to God be the glory. I have to share something with you. Do you not know, we had to ask Bishop Smith for this place. My father wanted everything at fellowship. He said, cause it wouldn't be that many people. So, Reverend Thurston and Reverend Meeks, am I telling the truth? Yeah. He talked. He talked to those two. The month he passed on Wednesday, he talked to them on Monday. He said it won't be that many people there. <laughs> Y'all can do everything at fellowship. It'll be a nice little group, and it won't look sparse. <laughs> but it's good to be that humble. Bishop Dr. Horace Smith. Our, your kindness, all I can say is our family is forever indebted to you. It's not, it's not just about today. He was the last visitor my dad had. And I said, Daddy, Bishop Smith wants to come see you. He said, Annie. Bishop Smith, I said, come on and see Dad. He said, I'm not dressed. I said, neither are we. <laughs> he came in and he said, my sage, sage. I had to go look up sage. What do you mean by sage? I only know if it has a cooking ingredient, but it means someone full of wisdom. That's what he called Dad. And I said, Bishop, I said, my nephew, Bing and I were there, and I said, Bishop, we'll walk out. He said, please. We walked out and closed the door, and he called us back a few minutes later. But Bishop, thank you. You did, us, you did something very kind for my family. And you know what my dad told me? Nobody has to be nice to you. And we walk around saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we don't thank the people around us. Every day. Thank you. Okay, Shipites, where are you? Stand up. As I said earlier, once a Shipite, my daddy's heart is fellowship. The staff at Fellowship has been working nonstop. You know, it's hard keeping up with Pastor Jenkins and Associate Pastor Sharp. Then they had to deal with this. That staff, raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you. And over a holiday period, too. Thank you. All the program participants from last night, thank you. The civic and governmental leaders, Deputy Chief, Fred Waller. If you hear this message, just know I'm not fighting you today. I used to fight him in high school, you guys. But thank you for your kindness to our family. My New Orleans family who was here, the late prophet, Blake's sons were here yesterday. Daddy's surgeon and primary care physician, Dr. Alexander Doulis and Dr. Henry Danko. Dr. Doulis came through yesterday. He said, you know, he's, he's, he's Greek. So I'm, when I think of talking about him, I always want to try to imitate him. 
He says, you know, I met Revan. <laughs> and at Revan, he was something else. <laughs> Revan, I took him into surgery. And when he was there, I'm preparing him. And he's got a lot of banter going on with the nurses. And they're just going and fawning all over him. And then he says, Gail, that Reverend Jesse, he comes and stands over me. Okay, let me tell you, Dr. Dulles is this tall. <laughs> On a good day, he's this tall. Reverend Jackson, okay. He stands over Dr. Dulles. Don't mess up. That's what he remembered. He spoke of it yesterday. Mr. Joette Dixon, the day my dad retired, the last Sunday broadcast, you walked up to me and you said, Claudette, I'm retired now. I'll take Reverend anywhere he wants to go. Guess what? You did it. I'm just saying thank you. Just saying thank you. And my mother thought that you and my brother Butch were trying to keep dad, he made daddy think he was young. She said, look at him, thinking he a hip cat, fooling with Joey and, and Butch. My dad's therapist, Jim, Tina, Robert, Nicole, or as daddy called, Cole, stand up. Jim, I still say you kicked my father. My father had a stroke, and we told him, we said, Jim, dad's a man's man, so we're gonna give him a man to work with. And my dad, one of his legs was a little weak. Jim, I saw him do this. I was like, Jim, but I thought, he's a therapist. My father loved him. He kicked his legs, and I, stand up straight, stand up straight. You did that, Jim. I don't think that really is a part of therapy. Mm. And he loved your barbecue. Our California family, Margaret, Sonny, stand up. Reverend Ricky, y'all stand up. Is Quafer with you? Where's Quafer? Where are you, Quafer? Stand up. There you are. Quafer, you know, I told Daddy. I said, you know, Daddy, when you pass, we need to get Quafer here to, to take care of everything. He would be here running it if he could. But see, Reverend Jenkins would have shut you down by now. Sonny, thank you all. And you know, Margaret, that's my California family. Margaret's my, Margaret's my cousin, and her sister Norma told me, I get so sick of you saying, Daddy. Daddy, daddy, daddy. And I thought about it. Norm said that. I started to remember, where did I get daddy like that from? I can't tell it all. And I won't, because I got some big brothers. They are gangsters. They will sit me down, take off my hat, and everybody will run. <laughs> I remember being in kindergarten, and my I, I lost, I left my blanket. We always took naps. I left my blanket, I had a, a red and black blanket. And my mother sent my father to the school. And here comes this man, Ooh, daddy. I just grinned and I thought, I said, wow. That's, that's when I really thought about my dad. Michelle and Brian, are you here from the Grove? Are you here? Where are you? Eugene Smith, my dad's attorney. Are you here, Eugene? Evans Funeral Home, Dari. Dari. Dari came to pick dad up from the house Reverend Jackson had to tell her, okay, get up and do your job. <laughs> she fell out all over daddy and everything. And we like, oh, this is the undertaker. What's gonna happen with the rest of us? 
I kind of mentioned that I had some gangster big brothers, Reverend Thurston and Reverend Meeks. Dad met with them two days before he died. Two days. And he said, I want to meet with y'all Friday. There's something about being in God's will. I'm just going to make up a time. He called Reverend Thurston maybe at 1 o'clock. By 2.30, they were both present to meet with him. And Daddy said, I want you to see about my family. I wanted to do, do this, that, and the other. And since Dad passed, they have called us. And I'm going to tell y'all, don't mess with us. I'll call them. <laughs> They're no punks. Believe me. They are no punks. They will get you. <laughs> Reverend Jackson, someone said that you and my dad are 100% alike and 100% unalike. Yes. <laughs> Jonathan, I won't say it was you. I won't say it was you, Jonathan. But you were daddy's eldest son. You all, you loved daddy, and daddy loved you. When daddy was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, you rounded with the surgeons every morning, six o'clock. You would call us and tell us what they said. You were a friend. You were a friend. We'll, be, we'll always love you for that. And speaking of his surgery, his doctor told me, he said, Gail, he told me yesterday, he said, in my community, what your father had, we would call a cure. You all would call it a miracle. They gave Daddy six months to live in, in April 2000. And I'm gonna be I'm almost done. I'm really going to be quick. Reverend Sharp, my dad, I say daddy, I'm sorry, you because I'm sorry, daddy. My daddy was excited about fellowship with you steering the ship. You are a man after his own heart. Reverend Jenkins, okay, I'm going to let the cat out of bed. I don't call him Reverend Jenkins. I call him Broy. <laughs> Broy, you took care of my mama and daddy. <laughs> when daddy became ill a month ago, Reverend Jenkins and I were both out of town, but I text him, I said they've taken dad to the hospital. He said, I'm going to get a flight tonight. I said, don't do it tonight. Well, part of the reason I said I don't have the whole story. And I didn't want him beating me there. What did he do? <laughs> Reverend Jenkins, Reverend Jackson, and Reverend Sharp were at the hospital before I could even get in town. <laughs> and, you know, in the latter days, Reverend Jenkins came in the back and he said, Reverend, I want to hire you a private duty nurse just for you. I just want you. I want them to just see about you. And Daddy said, no, nah, don't do it. I got her. <laughs> don't waste your money. But there are so many things I could say about you, Reverend Jenkins. But I must summarize by saying thank you. Ta-ta. <laughs> Much obliged. My sisters and brothers, and in particular, Butch and Faith. Butch would come by, Michael, but we call him Butch. Butch would come by every day on his way to work and every evening on his way home. How many people do that? Butch did it. And Faith, also known as 
and glass. She kept everything going at that house. They both provided TLC. I'm saying that because you two in my mind did many more than many of us did. You really did. When daddy left the hospital, he would always ask for peach cobbler. And Faye would know she'd have to cook it. And then she'd be mad because it may upset his stomach or whatever. And she's like, oh, I'm just going to make it anyway. And I have to thank each of you for attending today and sacrificing your time. A month ago, Daddy and I were listening to Moody. He had a big mahogany chair that was my husband's. And I was in the chair, he was in the bed, and the, in the, in the, on the program that day, he was a widow. She called and she said, you know what, I lost my husband a few years ago. Then she said, I lost my father. And she said, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I would go through life. And I looked over at Daddy, and he looked at me, and he started crying. I said, Daddy, that's for me, huh? He just nodded. After that time, I started calling him Elijah, and I was Elisha. And when I would leave him at night, I said, Daddy, don't you go anywhere, Elijah. I'll be back in the morning. I said, who am I? He said, Elisha. But really, what I liked about Elijah and Elisha is that when Elijah left here, just go. Elisha picked it up. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. I was a daddy's girl. I am a daddy's girl. We used to work out and we used to travel together. In his final moments, he passed away in my sister in my arms. And we were playing Walk in the Light. The beautiful light. Somewhere the dew drops, that mercy shine bright. Shine all by day and by night. Yes, Jesus is the light of the world. And you know what? As we were, we were playing that, as he was leaving, and we, he said, sit me up. So we set, set him up. And when you say, sit me up, you don't say that to Faye. Faye, I'm sitting straight up. And the, the, the soloist said, she said, hark. Hark the herald. Angels sing. My father had the nerve to do. My father did this, he said. She said, she said, she said, Hark the Herald Angels sing. Glory. Glory to the newborn king. Then he dropped his arm. I said, Faith, let's lie him back. We laid him back. We laid him back. He said, oh, daddy's gone. I said, no, he's not gone. We looked at him. He was lying. He put his hands together. He said, and he turned his head. He turned his head. I said, look at his mouth, Faye. He just started smiling. Then he turned his head and said, 